Hi, this is Russ Anderson. In this tutorial, I'm going to show how you can integrate a 3D planar tracker with an existing 3D match move. So we're just going to start out by auto tracking this shot, which is just from one of the little local malls under construction. So we've got an auto place there that's a little below ground level, so we're just going to go over and I hit the place again to get a, a ground level that makes more sense with these particular trackers. So as a result of that solve, you know, we have a camera path, we have all the positions of the uh, various features that attract, and we also have a estimated field of view value as a result of this 3D solve. Now if you watch some of our other tutorials, you realize that that field of view value is really important to the 3D planar trackers. Certainly all the 3D planar trackers have to agree with whatever the overall camera field of view is. So we want to use the same field of view value for the 3D planar trackers that we're going to create. So to do that, I'm going to hop over here to the 3D panel and select the camera. And that then activates this button here, makes it so I can click it. And that blast button copies from the solved path and the solved field of view values up into the seed values, which are the ones that are used, if you, if you so choose, as the basis of the solve to help determine it in the first place. But in this case, that seed value for the lens field of view is also what's used by the 3D planar trackers. So I'm going to tell it that I wanted to copy the field of view value as well. So, you know, that saved this value away. If you wanted to see that, there's a little button. Oops, that was not the one I wanted, but it's the uh, show seed path there that switches back and forth between the solid versus the seeds in the various. Uh, viewports. So now that I've got the seed field of view values set up as part of this solve, let's go over to the planar tracking room. So suppose we want to do something with the sign there. So we're going to create a new 3D planar tracker and we want to tell it we want to use that known field of view value. So we're going to just start laying down some corners about right. I'm just holding down the uh, Alt key now to help be able to do that placement for the fourth corner. So we've got something that's lined up reasonably in the tracker mini view there. So now I can go and track this through the shot. And if, if you look, there's actually a pole that's, that's in front of this some of the time. But that doesn't really make a whole lot of difference because it's fairly small and it's black as well. It is possible to go and rotoscope this out really pretty quickly, but it's not necessary for what we're doing here. So we track the end in that direction. And now we'll also just track through to the beginning as well. Again, you'll see that pole wipe across the pattern a little bit. So there we've got that track set up. So we can go over to the 3D viewports. There's our camera path again. And now you can see the planar tracker moving around back there. Now that's not really what you expect. You know, there are some other trackers there on that wall. But there's really nothing to say where it is. There's a, a planar tracker from one view. There's, there's an arbitrary scale to it. And that's what this 3D size value is about down here in the viewports. 
that if I wanted, I can go and set this value up. And that would give me a way to adjust this if I want. I'm using the control key to do a little fine adjustment. So I could go and do it that way if I'm so inclined. But there's actually a more interesting way and more exact way to do it. And I'll point out if I had the an onset measurement, this is what I'd be doing with it. I'd be putting it into this 3D size value as either a height or a width value. But instead I can go over to the trackers panel and here is the zero weighted tracker button. And I'll just configure our planar tracker as a zero weighted tracker. Now the interesting thing about zero weighted trackers is that they get computed immediately what their exact 3D location is once you already have a camera solve. So they, they actually have two properties. One, they don't influence the camera solve, and because they don't influence the camera solve, you can independently compute them at any time. So I did that, and that let Synthesis determine exactly where to put the planar tracker. So having done that, you know, we can scrub through the shot, and you'll see that there's a little residual motion to it, which has the property that it doesn't really affect the image by definition. You know, if you think about it, the camera is sitting back in this direction, so all the little jitter is in the direction towards and away from the camera. So if you wanted, you could actually freeze the position of the planar tracker at any of these frames, and basically it's all going to come out looking the same over there. Or you just export at this point in time and uh, allow that little residual vibration to it, if you like. And that can be a good option if there's a bunch of lens distortion or other sorts of issues that mean that the track doesn't quite come out exactly right. You know, the animation in that position there is basically dynamically correcting on a frame by frame basis for whatever issues there are in the shot. So there's one other interesting thing that we can do with this planar tracker now, which is, let's bring up our little script bar for it. I can run this script for corner trackers and you see that it has gone and created four individual conventional trackers, one at each of the corners of the planar trackers. And these trackers have been completely pre-animated by the script. So there's no tracking involved in them. And in fact, those entire trackers can be completely off the edge of the image and they're still perfectly good because basically sometimes it's just stored their coordinates directly into the tracking data but they are fundamentally still 3D trackers you know, re you know just regular trackers so that if we go to the solver again we can go and you know, update our solve and we have those points also as 3D locations. So that's a way to grab some more data from these for whatever you need to do. But it also shows you a technique that you can use if you have several 3D planar trackers and want to use them to do a regular solve without any additional trackers or just with a few additional conventional trackers, you can convert your planar tracker to have these four additional corners. So you're taking one planar tracker and really you're getting five trackers out of it because the planar tracker also still is, is basically a tracker too as far as the 3D solving process is concerned. One caveat to this process though is that because all of these points are on a plane and related to one another 
they don't contain as much data as several independent trackers that you tracked and had in different locations in the scene. So although there are five trackers, they're probably really only worth about two and a half trackers in the overall solving process. So in order to do a, a reasonable 3D solve, you probably need to have somewhere around three regular planar trackers that you then converted to add these additional corners to. And they shouldn't all be exactly on the same plane, all exactly flat, because then basically none of them are really adding very much individual data. So hopefully this has shown you how you can add some 3D planar trackers into your regular solve and vice versa, how you can take some planar trackers and produce data to use for a regular match move solve as well. Take care.